And good afternoon, everyone. We are back here on Speed Gaming with another match in the Fall 2019 Link to the Past Randomizer Tournament. Uh, up in their first game of their second round match are Christos, Owen, and Yoshi. I am Cool Papa Bell 2282 commentating for you today. And with me is Tracy M. How are you doing this afternoon, Tracy? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, looking forward to this matchup. Uh, we have... Christos, who is the number 30 seed, having beaten number 35, Zero Rush, 2-1. to one. Yoshi, the number 3 seed, having be beaten number 62, NY Rambler, 2 to nothing. Both very good runners, so we should have a good three game, two or three game series. Uh, should be a good matchup. Uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. If there's one thing we're learning from this tournament, it's that there are a lot of people out there who are really good at rando. So we're going to see nothing but great matches from here on out, if I had to guess. Okay, and it is a game one, therefore we are doing a regular 7-7 seven, seven open mode, so no changes yet. Yep, the usual game one settings, as uh, I think people are starting to call them, which is good because we can't really call it standard mode, even though it's sort of the no. standard thing that you roll when you uh, just say, I want to play a randomizer. Yeah, the, the term standard is an unfortunate one because of the because it has a very specific meaning when it comes to Link to the Past randomizer. Uh, we do see that a lot in game twos and threes, but we're not going to see that here because this is a game one. And funny that Yoshi doesn't use the Yoshi sprite, but I'm actually not sure what either of these sprites are, to be honest. Uh, let's see, I saw a Pendant there in Desert Palace, and a Red Crystal in Tower of Para, and a Regular Crystal over in Eastern. And we do see both doing the Uncle Start. We're going to get a tree pull here. Uh, five rupees, not terrible. Not really what you're looking for. Really what you want to see is either bombs or big 20s. Yeah. Uh, okay, good chat filling me in. Uh, I wasn't sure which of the Koopa kids that was that Christos is playing as, but apparently that's Roy Koopa. Need to uh, catch up on my Mario lore. <laughs> and Moon Pearl found very early on. But nothing we can use from from the Uncle area to go to the the escape. So both runners going to save and quit over to Sanctuary. So Moon Pearl, one piece of our Dark World access. Uh, not sure where exactly that's going to come from yet, but Moon Pearl, also nice to have early on in case you wind up in a position to fake Flipper, uh, that you can get into the Waterfall Cave that way. Okay, Yoshi decides not to go ahead. It looks like they're both going to just go into the Lost Woods, not worrying about the Lumberjack Ledge right now. That's fairly common. A lot of times runners don't want to take a look there until they have the boots and they know they can actually get that item. Yeah, and any place you can save yourself five or ten seconds can make a big difference in races uh, as high level as this one is going to be. But so far, not much. Oh, that three bomb pickup is nice. They don't have to worry about uh, the bombs for the first part of Kakariko. Yeah, and sufficient rupees to uh, sort of clear out what they need to in Kakariko. They'll be able to check the bottle vendor and um, buy bombs on the way out if necessary um, after the rupee pickups in Blind's Hut and the Well. And Yoshi's going to show us Blind's Hut first. And as usual, the opening part of a rando seed is fairly scripted. Not a whole lot of decisions to be made yet. It's really this first bonanza of item checks that you get in Kakariko Village that you have to make your first decision about. Yeah, every once in a while you'll see some runners will try and do something different. Um, but the the uh, Kakariko start is pretty common, especially if you don't get anything that leads you elsewhere. And we do get a bottle, so that at least allows us to check Sick Kid before we leave. Uh, 
Okay, Yoshi jumps into the well. We do get our first sword here, that's nice. Piece of heart, ether, and more bombs. So that ether may or may not be useful. I was going to say, no real complaints about getting a reliable weapon early on. Oh, absolutely uh, not. For run of, of escape is now a possibility, uh, especially since we found that key in the sanctuary. Uh, going all the way to Zelda Cell is in logic. And we get 200 rupees back on our bottle vendor investment. <laughs> I wish Zora gave that kind of return. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, our sick kid check. Just a piece of heart. But this early on, that gives him another full heart container, so nothing... Nothing too bad. Another piece of heart in the tavern. So, what, we got a sword, a bottle, and a moon pearl. So we got a couple important things. That sword is really nice, that moon pearl. Uh, no idea if that ether is going to mean anything. So kind of a dry Kakariko, but at least not completely empty. Yeah, nothing that's really going to uh, distract our runners uh, out of their usual path, so I would be pretty surprised if we saw them do anything but South Shore next from both of these runners. Okay, nothing on the race game or on the library. They might do the fake flipper after, if they go all the way over the ice rod cave, or even before that, they could do the fake flipper and check that area. Uh, getting close to Zora money, uh, it'd be nice to have that Zora money before you go over there. If that is the play you want to make. Yeah, and actually that sword was pretty big for that because our runners didn't really have to worry about buying bombs on the way out of Kakariko, which if you're trying yep. to scrape together Zora money this early on, that 50 bucks can actually be a huge difference. Yeah, they'll be able to kill all the Moldorms using the sword since you can kind of hug along the bottom to get over to them. Oh, and a Master Sword, even better. Although that's starting to be uh, scary in the Aga direction. Uh, we are just a lamp short of putting Aghanim 1 in logic. Yeah, that kind of thing doesn't really scare me unless it's a hard decision to make. So if we if we see a glove or a hammer before we have to make that decision, I think that becomes a much harder thing to do. Uh, sometimes the seed just points you right at Aga and you just have no other choice. And it's very easy to then make that decision. But now we see a little bit of divergence. Looks like Yoshi's going to go over to Agina's cave while Christos is going to head over and do the uh, mini Moldarm cave first. Yeah, interesting. Some divergence there. Just one check over here for Yoshi, but it can give you a really big advantage on your opponent if it pays off because, uh, especially if you know they're not the type to head to Agina very early. Yeah, it's not unusual to, for runners to put off this this location until very, very late. In fact, there were a couple of races last night, uh, one in particular, that uh, it's very costly when runners don't get to this area earlier. Or in that particular race. In, in that particular race. Here we didn't see much. I think I saw Arrow, so nothing here. And Quake was all we got out of Mini Moldorm Cave. Blue Cane as well, but that's not really progression of any sort at the moment. Yeah, blue cane, a nice item to have. It'll help you in your blind flight if you get in trouble with a Master Sword. That probably doesn't happen. Um, and of course, we'll get you Spike Cave um, with having to worry about bottle refills or anything. I put Spike Cave in logic, to be specific. Or when we can get to it, it'll put it in logic. <laughs> we are going to see the Ice Rod Cave check in Crystal, so let's see what we have here. And just rupees. All right, and at 465 uh, rupees, ops out of the fake flipper is going to stick to the logic for right now. Yeah, again, if you're going to make that fake flipper play, you really want to be able to do the full 
full check with Zora. And at 465 rupees, can't quite do it. it is going to go over to the escape, it looks like. At which point, if we find a lamp down here, he's going to have a tough decision. Do I bet on Aga? Or do I t uh, and take the chance that my items for Dark World could be elsewhere? Or do I leave and uh, have to come back possibly later? Yeah, and when the seat's pointing you to Aga this early on to this question of how much sequence breaking do you want to do uh, sort of has a lot more uh, weight to it. Because, you know, if that sequence break pays off and you get to skip Aghanim, that's huge. But if you waste time and then wind up getting funneled into Aghanim anyway, then yep. that feels pretty bad. So, Yeah, they're pretty, pretty hard choices at this point. And don't forget, we also have Eastern available to us. Um, uh, three items in Sarasala's Closet and up to three items in the Eastern Palace that'll be available. And it's like Yoshi maybe is going to make the Eastern play. So it's going to be interesting. Oh, wait. Uh, or is he going to do some fake flippering? Going to buy some bombs. Not Well, I'm not sure if he has the items for the uh, splash deletion, but he did buy some bombs, so maybe that was what he was going to... Oh, no, he's just going to... He yeah, was just checking. He was just checking Hylia Island. That's that's all he was doing. I didn't even see what was there. So uh, he's headed over to Eastern. Yeah. So I think this probably means Yoshi has sort of committed uh, that he's going to do as much as he can in the Eastern area, and then if there's nothing here, then he can go to escape and head right to Aghanim right after that, uh, and sort of only have to walk back to Hyrule Castle once. <laughs> and so far, not seeing anything in the escape. So we didn't see a lamp. Uh, it, if the seed wants them to do Aga, we're going to have to see that lamp. Uh, Aga is not in logic without it. Uh, not even the fire rod does it, because even though the hardest rooms in in Aga Tower do have the torch, uh, have the the torches you can light, there are enough rooms that don't that it it ends up not being in logic with fire rod. But if there were an item on Lumberjack, you might go and do it anyway if you had Fire Rod, but we don't know it's there. We didn't know, neither runner took a look. And I think we are down to just Eastern Palace as checks that we have in Logic, because Zora is not in Logic without uh, either flippers or at yep. least one glove. And we've seen Agina, so there's nothing left but Eastern at this point. That is correct. And there are definitely some options for what we could find here. Like, Book would open up some of Desert. Uh, Flute would get us a couple checks up on the mountain. The shovel. shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Giving us a fetch quest. Yeah, pretty easy not to make the decision to go ahead and do Ag when you don't have that lamp, though, so... So for a shovel and a map. So if the seed is going the way we sort of suspect it is, uh, Christos will have picked up a couple of seconds on Yoshi by not making that Agina check. Uh, since there was nothing there, uh, if he gets to the point where it's either do Agina or climb Aghanim's tower, uh, he will most likely head straight up the tower. So oh, we'll probably it, get there a little bit sooner than Yoshi. Oh, especially if if he finds doesn't if they don't find a hammer or a glove, then this decision's easy because now you need two items. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it looks like logically that shovel is our progression because uh, yeah. it's an easy sequence break to do, but this is locked behind the lamp. Uh, what Yoshi's about to do? Yeah, the big key looks like the big keys and the big key chest. Um, so there may or may not be an item. Actually, we may have, I don't think we saw the compass, but we may or may not have an item in the big chest. It's not in logic since we don't have lamp, so they will have to follow that shovel.
And since this is a crystal dungeon, and since this is the big key, uh, they're going to have to come back here and, full and clear it anyway. Getting the big key now just makes more sense. And then you can get one more chuck out of the way. Maybe it's something good, even if it's not the progression that we're looking for. And it is also one of the easiest dark rooms in the game, so neither runner's gonna have any trouble with it. And it is just a compass, so I believe there is an item sitting there on the Armos Knights. We're not gonna be able to get it because we don't have a no bow. So Yoshi saving a queen to Link's house is gonna go check out that shovel spot. And my money's on the lamp here at the dig spot, which will lead Yoshi directly to Aghanim, but it always could be a longer chain of logic that we have to follow. Yeah, I know if it were me, I'd want to just be the lamp. Just just tell me it's Aga and put me out of my misery. Just, just you know, whereas something like a flute could lead you to a whole bunch of other items. And, it, oh, and it's a club. <laughs> So wow. now, yeah, I mean, honestly, that, that maybe means we won't have to do Aga, but now it's it's a harder decision, you know? Like, yeah. Just make that decision easy. Give me that lamb, make the decision easy, and, and I'll, I'll go on my way. But now, uh, probably going to start with the back of Escape and see what's there. Uh, this puts Zora in logic, so we might see that fake flipper. Um, although Yoshi's still quite a bit short of money. Christo's a little bit closer. Yeah, and this also means that once we find that lamp, assuming that we do, uh, that will also give us Death Mountain as an option. Uh, although there is only going to be the Old Man Check and Spectacle Rock Cave at this point in Logic. Again, assuming we find the lamp. And nothing in the back of Escape. <laughs> it's like Yoshi's going to uh, go through the dark rooms and get to the uh, Dark Cross item. Which, honestly, isn't a bad play, because if we're assuming, you know, if your mindset is that this is going to be an Agassiz, you're expecting the lamp is going to come up relatively soon, and so this item might be something useful. But uh, I believe at this point, it has to be a Zora play? Is that, am I, am I missing stuff that, that is in logic at this point? Yeah, I don't think the glove opens up anything else besides Zora, so... But it does give us the advantage of it's a little bit more plausible that a sequence break might get you around the Gina. Yes, you yes. Know, fake flippering to find the second gloves or the hammer uh, would let you skip climbing the tower today. Or the, uh, the couple checks we can get out of the Death Mountain area. And it's just a heart container. The other upside of the gloves is that our runners can uh, head to that rock in front of Ice Rod Cave and mm -hmm. uh, farm some rupees if they want to. Uh, Yoshi, however, has not done front of escape yet, so it makes sense that he's going to head here before making that long trek up to Zora. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Christos just needs to get a, a five rupee drop and he'll be ready to go pay Zora, so... Christos could also take the chance to go to Agina's cave uh, and farm rupees out of that desert cave on the way there. That would still be a pretty long walk, though, so I would suspect he's going to head right to the Zora area. Yeah, actually, it's kind of a shame that uh, it's it's Yoshi that's already checked that area because he needs to do a lot more farming to get up to that Zora money. Uh, Christos already at 496. But it looks like he's going to go ahead and go over to Death Mountain. At the very least, it'll give him that save quit spot. So not a bad choice. Or he might go ahead and check. Is he going to... Could check Lumberjack as well. We still don't know what's over there yet. Yep. Yeah, the walk to Death Mountain is something that you're 
decently likely to have to do anyway uh, to get this save and quit point. Uh, the only way around it is if we find the flute before coming up to the mountain eventually later. So this is probably not any time wasted, even if he doesn't find any progression up here. Yeah, this is probably the, what I would call probably the second easiest dark room. Uh, I think that eastern one is a, that first eastern one is a little bit easier. Um, but frankly, I think it's the most important one because because specifically of that saves quit spot that you get out of it. Yeah, what is the old man? <laughs> a tempered sword. It's not progression, but it's nice. Um, and I'll tell you, if you have to do Aga, having a tempered sword to do it just makes that make it, it makes it that much quicker. Yeah, that will definitely make a noticeable difference on that tower climb. And it looks like Yoshi is going to have that advantage as well, because he's headed toward the Death Mountain ascent at this moment too. Oh, and there's an ice rod. Um... So if we do have a crystal uh, TR, we know exactly where that ice is. And that's oh. a hammer. Oh! <laughs> so really good call from both of these runners to sequence break Death Mountain. Uh, that is going to pay off for them. Uh, the hammer is going to give us Dark World access. And was that a bow in the, uh, in the uh, Lumberjack cave? Oh, I wasn't even watching. Was that a bow? Oh my god. And wow. In, in V31, the bow in the lumberjack has a whole new meaning to it because uh in V30 and previous, if you saw a bow at lumberjack, you're just going to get it unless both uh t both uh Pod and Eastern are are pendants and you know how to do the mimic clip up GT. Um but with V31, we have progressive bows. So, might or might not need to get that. But the second bow could be someplace also be in GT, and you might still have to get it. So that's like actually a kind of a nasty item to put there. Okay, it's not kind of. It is a nasty item to put there. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be uh, fascinating to see how this plays out. If we find that second bow uh, somewhere along the path, or if we have to do Aga just to collect that Lumberjack item. Um, so we'll and, also see how Christos Owen does not knowing about it. And the other question is, at what point do you make that decision? Do you last location it, or do you just, or do you make a, take a gamble and, and do it at some point earlier? And Christos yeah. is going to do that Agina check, so at this point, all our runners will have basically done all the same things. And our runners are also going to know uh, pretty much what Zora is, right? It has to be some sort of Death Mountain access or something blocking it, uh, either the yeah. lamp or something leading to the flute. Yeah, or it could just up be the flute. So I would actually go, you know, if I have the money, and Christos has got to have it. Yeah, Christos with enough money, I would just go break to that right now. Uh, just to, just, okay, he might just do some of these Dark World checks right away first, so that's not a bad plan. But I would definitely... Uh, in my mind, be thinking, when am I going to go do that check? Because uh, if it's lamp, then, you know, um, as long as I find a fire rod, it's okay to skip it. But if it's the flute, especially if Misery Mire ends up being required, and it is, uh, you're going to need that flute. And so uh, getting that flute from Zora is something I would prioritize. Yeah, and we see a green pendant pod, and the other pendant is in Swamp Palace today. So no guarantee that we're going to get our flippers anytime soon. Although, I guess they would be needed for Ice Palace as well, logically speaking. Yeah, that's where you wish for, you, you hope for the uh, quote-unquote flippers go mode and you just ignore it. <laughs> we get a mushroom. So more fetch quests on the table. Well, everybody loves fetch quests, right? <laughs> Except the runners. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that might also make our runners a little bit more hesitant to uh, fake Flipper, because uh, there's a chance that Flippers are going to show up very late in the seed logically, and so then there's less likelihood that fake Flippering would actually lead them to anything. Although, again, since they know something good is on Zora, uh, it's probably going to pull them somewhat in that direction. Yeah, I mean, if they, I, I guess if they find a mirror, maybe they combo Zora with Catfish instead of with the Flippers checks. So that's also a possibility. But uh, I would definitely want to get to that Zora area in the not too distant future. And Yoshi gonna check the pyramid ledge. Oh, 
So this is also interesting. I think there's no way that uh, Aga could be logically required for our Dark World access. Obviously, it could be to uh, unlock that first bow. Uh, but if we found the lamp anywhere uh, down the logic chain from Zora's item, then that means we could have just climbed the mountain to get to that hammer. So there yep. was no need necessarily to do an Aga to get Dark World access. This is a lot of digs in the dig game. And flippers. Okay, so uh, there's our answer of uh, flippers checks. Not going to be go mode flippers. We already have them. That was a lot of digging, too. Yeah, that did uh, raise Christos's uh, cash hoard, though. 615 can... Uh, buy the Zora item and bribe his way into Palace of Darkness as well. Yeah, and interesting with, with Pod being a pendant it makes it a little bit more difficult uh, just because ideally you'd want to combo that in with Eastern. But we've seen a lot of uh, seeds with items in pendant Pod, so it may be that they decide to go there anyway. And we're going to see that mushroom check here in just a second. Yeah, actually having the flippers is very nice for Chris since he can do this mushroom on the way up and not have to worry about any crazy fake flipper setups to get into the uh, waterfall cave. Yoshi not oh. even wanting to farm is going to set up a hula hand glitch here to uh, make sure he has pod money as well as Zora money. Yep. At 499, that gets him enough for Zora, but then that 110 rupees that Kiki the monkey takes from us uh, wants to have a little bit of extra, so he doesn't have to worry about that. Christos throwing in his empty bottle, getting a B out of it. Probably was hoping to get an extra potion because. Uh, Without the bow, uh, if he wants to check all of Pod, he's going to want to be able to potion glitch. I do believe he has a red one, so it would just be, a, just be an extra one for him. <laughs> and 300 rupees sitting there on Zora's ledge. <laughs> Seems like Zora should invest in a cash register or something instead of just uh, leaving all the spare rupees lying, spare rupees yeah. lying around. Yeah, I'm not sure why uh, Christos used that ether there, so... And there's the lamp. <laughs> so the most boring possible outcome is just the lamp sitting there on Zora. Yeah, and apparently, according to our tracker, Link Force, doing uh, a great job behind the scenes. Um, apparently Christos already used his red potion, so... Uh... Let's see where he decides to go next. And since we don't have a fire rod at this point, having the fire source of the lamp is really good. Uh, we don't know where that fire rod's going to be, but I suspect they might have rather seen a flute there. Yeah, and with these runners, they're certainly capable of doing all the dark rooms in the game, but it does certainly slow you down not having that lamp. So, And with the possibility of Zora having had the flute, you, you just sort of have to clean that up sooner rather Absolutely. than later. Absolutely. And Yoshi going to get his lamp as well, so we're not going to see any dark rooms today. But we might still need to see that Aga play, because uh, that, that bow is sitting there. <laughs>
So Christos's trip into the village of outcasts here looks like he's going to clear out the three items in the village and then probably full clear thieves town. With that thieves hammer, town. you can grab a crystal. No reason not to. Yeah, they. Yep. Uh, thieves town is a crystal. He has the hammer. Uh, no worries leaving anything behind. So really only minor divergence from our runners at this point. Uh, Christos Owen has cleaned up the South Dark World, uh, so Stumpy in the digging game, where Yoshi has seen a couple of things in the Eastern Dark World. Um, but that means Yoshi is definitely going to be pulled south out of uh, Thieves Town. So if they find the mirror or something like that that would open up checks on the north side, uh, Yoshi is probably going to skip out on those for now uh, in favor of digging game and Stumpy in K45. Mm -hmm. So lots of ways this could go, depending on what our runners find in Thieves Town or the surrounding areas to point them to their next destination. Yep, and of course, there's no guarantee we're ever going to see that mirror with Swamp being a pendant, so... Which honestly wouldn't be that bad, um, just simply because Swamp just simply not being an option is, uh, is a nice thing. Yeah, Pennant Swamp is such a weird thing. Um, I've heard the argument that uh, people should make the Pennant Swamp play a lot more than they do, just because if the seed is giving you everything you need to get into Swamp, uh, there's probably a reason for it. And sometimes that's correct, and sometimes it's not. So just <laughs> so just like any pendant, any pendant dungeon, you have the choice of do I go in it um, or do I not. Um, and which is going to be the worst choice. And you just never know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so chat reminding us, by the way, we did see the ice rod up on Spectacle Rock. So the mirror will be required to finish this scene. Oh, actually. yeah, absolutely. Good point. We will need the mirror because uh, Turtle Rock is a crystal. And of course, the flippers were going to be required regardless to defeat Ice Palace, logically speaking. So... You know, those signs pointing you to Swamp Palace might or might not actually point to Swamp in this seed. As you say, it's always sort of a gamble uh, when you're dipping the Pendant Dungeon, and just depends on how much you want to read into those signals that the seed is sending you. So far, we haven't seen a whole lot here in the East Town, but a few more checks to go. Well, ten bombs would have been nice at the beginning of the seed. <laughs> Not so useful anymore. And there will be something in the big chest since we have all the dungeon items. As yeah, well as I'm blind. <laughs> okay, there will be a... Town. Yeah, there is an item in the big chest. <laughs> Nothing we particularly want. Christos the first into this scripted blind fight. And very nicely done. Almost takes no damage. And more arrows, so uh, we got a crystal! But nothing else in Thieves Town. Whole lot of ammo, but nothing useful. Whole lot of ammo for an item that's sitting up there on Lumberjack. <laughs> it's just 
just the seed taunting them at this point. It is. You know, I bet you wish you had a bow, don't you? <laughs> Although I believe Christos doesn't know that yet. I think it was Yoshi that checked that spot. As Christos cleans up the rest of the village of Outcast, found, finds a container heart. And one last check. More arrows. So it looks like he is going to head up to the North Dark World at this point. Probably dip into Skull Woods and see what we can find there. Yeah, there's quite a few spots in Skullwoods we can check, even though we can't get to the back. I believe it's five in total. Nope, looks like he's going to skip that for now. Now, I checked out Bumper Ledge. I, I, I confess I didn't quite see what that was. Uh, I think it was just shield? cash. Just cash? Okay. So... Okay, now we get the Skullwoods play. Yeah, and I was going to say, then Christos is probably going to just head east along the north side of the world here, can pick up Catfish, and then probably dip into Pendant Pod next, since he's run out of other stuff to do in the Dark World. Unless, of course, we find something interesting in the front of Skull Woods. Get the big key. He's not going to go ahead and grab that small key out of there, so uh, we'll see how he routes this other area. I kind of like to get that small key just so that I don't have to, so I can start from the main entrance here in this first part rather than falling down one of the holes. And then if you want to get out, you can death warp to the front or uh, get grabbed by one of the hands. Christo's not messing around there with that bomb jump. Going for the uh, fast NMG strats instead of the safer ones that rando runners usually do. Of course, there's a good chance that he's just going to save and quit out of here, and then if he wants to make that pod play, uh, can just do so from starting at Link's house. Oh, there are those boots. Wow. Uh, well, that's certainly the progression that chat wanted our runners to find. <laughs> yeah, it just makes it more likely that they're going to need to get that bow. Uh, we never saw the boots, and there ha would have to be another bow available somewhere. So yeah, those boots really only open up one thing, which is uh, bonk rocks, uh, other than making Lumberjack accessible after we defeat Aghanim. Let's see if Christos makes those checks now. Yeah, I think he's going to check Bonk Rocks right away, and then I think he's going to go ahead and check the Lumberjack and get the bad news. Yeah, this is when most runners choose to route in this Lumberjack check, is when you're doing Bonk Rocks, uh, since you know the Lumberjack item is accessible at this yep. point, then it's worth checking. Yeah, either you do it at the very beginning or you do it right here. We saw Yoshi do it a little bit earlier uh, as he was going up to Death Mountain the first time. And that makes sense, too, because at that moment, at that point in time, we were thinking this might be an Agassiz. So finding out what's there makes a lot of sense. Yep, and a good question to always ask yourself is, am I ever going to be closer to this item? And you are yes. literally never closer to checking Lumberjack than when you're about to climb Death Mountain. So <laughs> and there he is. the bad news. Yep. 
didn't immediately save and quit. So he he's definitely thinking, okay, that is a bow. It is not necessarily the bow. So I think Christo still has Hobo left to check. Yes. And, I uh, think that's Yoshi where they're both now. going right now. I think Yoshi has finished off the flippers checks okay. and is now looking at Pendant Pod, so he's just going to walk up uh, and head in the portal at Flute 5. That makes a lot of sense. And unfortunately, with that, unless they find a mirror in Pod, they're not going to be able to combo this with uh, finishing up Eastern. And at this point, Yoshi really needs for there to be something in Palace of Darkness uh, for him to continue progressing in this seed because uh, he's always losing time uh, every second mm -hmm. that Christos has the boots and he doesn't. That's so... absolutely right. And yeah, it looks like Christos is just going to bite the bullet on Aghanim, uh, make definite progress as opposed to... Oh, nope, proven nope. me wrong. He might be headed to the pod area as well. Yeah, I think they're both going to head to pod first. Uh, or he might be going ahead and getting a potion to, to be able to do a potion glitch through pod. And it's not unusual to find a bow in the bowlock side of pod with the progressive bows that we have now. I think Yoshi may still have his red potion, so he, he already has the ability to do that. Yep. Buying that green potion. There's, at this moment, there's no other reason to buy a green potion. And it is bow locked. As we see a bombos to start. But Yoshi not saving and quitting, so he's going to be doing... Uh, going to go ahead and do that potion glitch. Oh, unlucky from Christos there. <laughs> Having to buy that potion meant he was short on bo uh, rupees also. Yeah, at 79, not enough to appease Kiki the monkey, so he's going to need a little bit extra. So he does the uh, cool hand room to get filled up. So, so far the big difference in this race has been the very first divergence that our runners did. Uh, they both went into... Oh, did Yoshi mess he up the He must have missed place? it, because, yeah. I, don't ask me how it works, but when you when you drink the potion in the right spot, uh, it, it unfocused or un... It takes the camera so that you can... It's not quite straight on the room. And then if you get those mimics off screen, the game thinks that they're dead and it opens the door. Yeah. And so, so Yoshi decided to just give up on Pod for now. Let's see if Christos can do a little bit better. And there are various ways to screw up that uh, potion glitch. Like if you uh, drink the potion while the bomb is still exploding, various things like that just sort of weirdly can mess things up. So uh, Yoshi trying Spike Cave from the looks of things, trying desperately to... Uh, find progression anywhere while Christos is trying very hard to avoid having to fight Aghanim. To be fair, Yoshi's ho hoping to be able to avoid fighting Aghanim as well. He just doesn't have the boots yet, so for him there really isn't a point in doing that. And just rupees. Uh, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, the uh, the big divergence was when they both went into Dark World at the same time at the uh, Hype Cave portal, uh, Yoshi went east and Christos went west, which then meant Yoshi headed south out of Village of Outcast later on to uh, finish off Dig Game and things in that area and missed out on those boots in Skull Woods, which are the big advantage that Christos Owen has at this particular moment.
He's got to use a little magic before he can take that potion. There you go. So you can see how, on Christos' side, you can see that the other room is in there. And so now he just needs to get all those mimics off screen. And the game thinks that they're all dead, so it opens the door. Yeah, it's a weird thing about super tiles, that the game isn't smart enough to check a single room. It checks the whole super tile. It's, it's a little weird, but... You try programming an assembly and see if you can do better, because <laughs> I know I couldn't. Well, especially uh, at the time this game was created. <laughs> Yeah, this has nothing to do with this game, but I always found it fascinating, sort of... Uh, you could see programmers getting better at games, even within a single system. Like, yes. the way Mario 1 looks versus the way Mario 3 looks is just Yes, ludicrous. absolutely. So, monitoring Christos' progression through uh, Palace of Darkness here, just finding those... Uh, expected keys early on in the dungeon and headed straight to the back okay well Yoshi's now in Skull Woods where he needs to be he is gonna get those boots we'll see what decision he makes about that bow He's probably feeling a little bit behind having messed up that potion glitch. So it makes me wonder if he would then, you know, whether that might incentivize him incentivize him one way or the other on the Agaplay. Yeah, that's almost where the uh, metagaming aspect of it comes into play. You almost might want to do the opposite of whatever you think your opponent is doing. Yep. And just hope that that's the correct choice. We see another potion in the big chest there. <laughs> Jeez. That's three bottles already for these runners. Crystal's going for the death warp. I gotta say, Christos hmm. opting for double speed beefs is uh, questionable in my mind. <laughs> it's an incredibly <laughs> aggravating noise. Interesting that he saved and quit to the front of Pod. Um, probably, I guess, gonna go to Catfish from here. Um, probably a little bit faster this way, I guess. That's uh, really not something I've ever timed out. Or maybe the Pyramid Ledge? Yeah, we saw that on Yoshi's side, I believe. Rather than having to go back to Link's house, go to the Dark World. And I think Christos left behind two chests in Pod, the Vanilla Big Key chest and then the uh, Stalpost Basement chest, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't think those were both small keys. I think there was at least one actual, at least dungeon item left in there. Yeah, I could see skipping out on that at this point. Uh, if, if there's, there's still a ch chance they might have to go back in there just for the Helmosaur item, um, if he has one. Uh, plus, it is the green pendant, and also, um, if they when they get the mirror, since we know they're going to get it eventually, uh, combo that in with Eastern, since they have to do that at some point too. And Yoshi is going to is making the play up Aga Tower. They say, you know what? I know where there's a bow, and I'm just going to go get it. Ah, okay. So again, our tracker is on top of things. Uh, telling me in chat that uh, those were actually both small keys in the front. I uh, lost track of the actual item counts there in pod, so. Which in pod is very easy to do. <laughs> and Crystal's getting the bad news. 
uh, catfish just with 20 rupees. And we're starting to run out of places to go. Thing is, the bow is not going to open up anything new for us at this point, other than I believe there is an item on Armos Knights, if I remember correctly. And so Christos is finally going to make that play to Aga. So this will be a time save for Yoshi if uh, he never goes into pod or never needs to go into pod. And so maybe messing up that potion glitch might, might have really helped him. Yeah, although since we have one item on uh, Armos and I think another item on uh, Helmosaur as well, yes. it's likely that we're going to have to go back into pod. Well, not likely, but very plausible that we're going to have to go back into pod just to defeat Helmosaur. So we mentioned that uh, Tempered Sword, definitely helping Yoshi speed his way up Aga's Tower. Uh, if anyone in chat wants to take part in our second favorite guessing game, guess how many blue balls Aganim is going to throw at us, anywhere from 0 to 15 are possible. I'm say 3, because it's always 3. <laughs> But in general, we are definitely running out of places to go. So, but we've got to give us something. Um, unfortunately, in Yoshi's case, it's a good chance he might still full clear pod. So, two blue balls so far. Also a nice thing to have in, in uh, Aga Tower is those boots. And I guess the, the number was two. And since we've already seen the ledge, there's, there's, you're just going to save and quit, go straight and get that bow. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's not that often that you've fully cleared out Dark World and then fight Agony. Yep. Oh, Yoshi hasn't checked the Bonk Rocks yet. We can do that now. Grabbing that bow. And Chris is also going to save and quit right from the top of the pyramid. We'll beeline it to get his bow. See if Yoshi just decides to finish Eastern first, or if he goes into Pod first. Nope, looks like he's going to finish Eastern first. If the if the item we're missing is on East, on Armos Knights, this will save him potentially a trip into the rest of Pod. Yeah, and routing wise, this just works out so much better because it's so much easier to uh, just run down to the portal at the Flute Five spot after you finish yep. Eastern, as opposed to the other way around. Christos gets his bow, and I suspect he'll beeline it right over to Eastern. 
So our runners split apart for, with some uh, route divergence in the mid-game, and now they are both back on the same linear path through this seed. So we'll see if there are any major decision points that come up after this. Or if it's just purely an execution race from here on out. I guess that's why we watch Rando, because you're just never <laughs> quite sure what's going to happen. <laughs> that's true. items we're looking for right now, we need a fire rod, uh, for sure, for both Skull, Skull Woods and TR. Uh, we have all our medallions, so that's not going to be an issue. Uh, we need a flute. We need a mirror, because the ice rod is sitting there in a mirror lock spot up on the Spectacle Rock. Um, and then there's that hook shot. Uh, so we don't need it for Swamp Palace. It always begs the question, uh, what are these guys' hovering skills, or can either one of them do the Moldorm bounce? And I don't have the answer to that last question. Uh, yeah, I could not tell you either. Um, but uh, one good thing is that both of our runners did find Bombos on their dip into Pod. So there's always the possibility of that being our access to Ice Palace as well. And then yes. Fire Rod is somewhere behind that. Uh, but just 300 rupees on that uh, Armos Knights. Uh, sorry, I forgot to warn you, chat, to uh, not blink during that fight. Went very quickly for Yoshi. <laughs> Yep. So I guess I guess we're in, going back into pod. So Yoshi not going to get that nice time save from being able to skip that. Yeah, definitely good news for Christos that Yoshi will probably end up full clearing pod also. Nicely done from Christos there. Uh, messed up the uh, script for that fight just a little bit, but uh, got back and got that quick kill, finishing off the last Armos before it could turn red and replenish all of its health. Yeah, very nice recovery there at the end. And our two runners were about 45 seconds apart on finishing off that Armos fight, so... Hard to say exactly yeah, who's in the about lead, to... but... Yeah. Chris is going to make that up, and a little more so, um, as he's just going to go straight to Helmosaur. Uh, Yoshi gonna have to, is going to have to full clear this. His hope is that there will be something before Helmosaur. Um, and of course, it still could be the Green Pendant, so... We will shortly be done with this area completely, one way or the other. Oh my god. Yoshi. That's the definite ouch getting electrocuted several times by those jellyfish. Just not cooperating <laughs> with those dashes. So I like to use the hook shot to kill them. Of course we don't have that right now. I uh, could use the bow if you wanted to. Now they had that have that harder and bow. Yeah, so we can see the uh, key counter there, by the way, that uh, Christos logically is supposed to have used that last key on the uh, uh, on the door into Dark Maze that he hammer yumped. Um, yep. So then that means the last two items have to be keys, so that there's one key left to open the vanilla big key chest door, and then one left for Helmosaur. So that also answers the question of why Christos did Dark Maze, uh, did the hammer yump when he had spare small keys is because then he didn't have to check any chests when he came back in. He can just run straight toward Helmosaur. Yeah, that's a really good call on his part. Really good knowledge. And it looks like Yoshi's gonna do this. No, maybe not. He's gonna have to come back. We'll see if he uh, thinks to do that as well. 
Uh, but he has these other checks first, so I don't blame him for going ahead and doing these first. Because if he finds something here, uh, then he doesn't even have to bother with Helmosaur, but we know that's not going to happen. Nope, Yoshi is going to go ahead and use that key. But he does still have one left. Um, but he'd have to go through... Yeah, because he's going to... I think he's going to have to go get one more of those keys, because he'd have to go through the... Uh, that first door. Yeah, it looks like he's setting up the uh, death warp here to get back yep. out. So just 20 bucks on Helmosaur. So, so it looks like pendant. Yep. Yeah, so Yoshi's just going to go ahead and go through the bow lock side instead of bothering picking up an extra key. And I think this is probably, uh, without the mirror, a little bit faster. Uh, I think if you had the mirror, then you go ahead and you just grab one of those keys, mirror out, and just go from the front. But yeah, having to, you know, jump down to the basement and then kind of go through some of the right side, walk through a couple portals anyway, probably just running this way and killing these mimics again is faster. I agree. And what do we have on Green Pendant? The hookshot. So that takes care of that hover question. <laughs> And opens up a whole uh, Death Mountain for us. Also, uh, well, we don't have the mirror yet, so it doesn't qu quite open up anything in Swamp yet. Uh, but we know we're going to find that mirror. And at this point, uh, the runners would probably be happy to find that as their go mode item. So they can just pick up their ice rod on the way to TR and, and be done. Yeah, and the linearity of the seed continues. Uh, with the items we currently have, this hookshot points absolutely nowhere except East Death Mountain. You know, Mitts would have given us lots of options, but with Hookshot, there's only one place to go. And there's a flute and a fire rod! First two items in in uh, Paradox. I believe that puts us a mirror away from Go Mode. Yeah, so an hour in, the seed has decided, okay, you've had enough. Here's a butter sword. Here's a flute. Here's a fire rod. <laughs> oh, and a mitt. <laughs> Let's not forget those mitts. That's kind of not just a little bit important, extremely important. So we need mirror and we need mitts. And at this point, <sighs> both open up a lot. So I'm not sure which one is better. Yeah, because the flute doesn't actually give us uh, access to anywhere new without those mitts since we yep. can't get into the mire area. But uh, Fire Rod, of course, will give us Skull Woods access to the back of Skull Woods, that is. Yeah, I'm actually going to go ahead and say I think I'd rather find the mitts earlier just to avoid the swamp question. But still, they both open up a lot. But while he's up there, Crystal's gonna go ahead and do Tower of Para. That makes a lot of sense. It's also one of our five, six crystals. Only two items here, but uh, at this point, Probably something's going to be in here. Um, that fire rod opening up the back of Skull Woods. We haven't seen both items there, I don't believe. I think we just saw the boots. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, so question in chat. Yeah, mirror is required because uh, the ice rod is stuck on Spectacle Rock, which is hard mirror locked, so. Yeah, Christos 
choosing not to do the Heropot, even though he has the the hook shot. Um, to be fair, uh, depending on how good you are setting that up, uh, not going to save a ton of time if you do it, um, if you mess it up a bunch of times. So he's just going to opt to walk up the tower. And there's that mirror. Uh, both items in uh, Tower Herod already found, though. Don't have to worry about going to the basement, at least. So we yes. are mitts go mode. Uh, yeah, quick trip through Herod there. Uh, mirror, definitely a good payoff. Uh, we are going to need the red cane also. Oh, yeah, okay. That is a very important thing. Uh, Turtle Rock and Mystery Mar both need those to be completed. Chat still holding out hope for a pen seed since uh, both Mitz and Red Cane could be there, theoretically. Yeah, it's true. With uh, all three of our dungeons, all three of our Mitz locked dungeons being um, crystals, that is a possibility. And without the book, we can't even check. So, you know, if I'm the runners, I don't even worry about that right now. So, I think Christos is going to grab this ice rod right now. You're right here, you may as well. Yeah, and it's slower to reclimb Death Mountain this way on your way to Turtle Rock, so it's probably the slightly faster choice. Mm hmm. <laughs> and gets dead rocked. We do still have Spiral Cave and uh, Spike Cave. And yeah, like Christos is going to do Spiral Cave. Yeah, I was going to say, I would suspect Christos is not going to do Spike Cave, which is um, actually the one check, I think, that was different between our runners that Yoshi had done, but Chris hadn't. So mm -hmm. uh, Yoshi probably would have hoped to gain back some time while Christos was checking that. So finding that flute and fire ride together was particularly nice because Christos can uh, route in finishing off Skull Woods with the flute activation. And then you're also in this part of the world where most of the mirror checks are uh, we can get into King's Tomb with the mirror, and uh, Graveyard Ledge and Cave 45 as well, uh, with then Swamp Palace as sort of your last resort. <laughs> yeah, the runners don't want to go into Swamp if they can avoid it. And this is where we go back to what do we want for our go mode item, and definitely would rather have the, those myths uh, find that cane sooner. Uh, there's so many checks those myths open up the whole entire smith chain. Um, if you miss your last item, you can go mode ice. Um, you can go mode misery mire, which may or may not have meaning depending on where the big key is. Uh, same thing with turtle rock, of course. But ice palace in particular, being able to just go mode, that is just such a big difference. Yeah, upside, I guess we're pretty much guaranteed a go mode Turtle Rock because there's no way to get in there without yeah. the uh, two items we need for go mode. Yeah, so absolutely. On the go other mode, hand, Turtle Rock means a lot. <laughs> I mean, depending, there, there are key layouts that make Turtle Rock faster in go mode. There are some key layouts that really don't, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hope that the runners get a nice key layout for uh, Turtle Rock then. And I'll especially say this, since with Turtle Rock, there's not a whole lot of divergence um, other than do you risk that 5% chance of uh, small key both in the lava chest and the big chest.
I am not surprised to see Chrysos uh, headed straight toward Motula. Uh, gonna check that first chest if necessary afterwards, but uh, a good public service announcement for everybody. Motula can never have a small key, yep. so uh, that can very often tell you that that under the bridge chest must have a small key. And even if you if it was like a, a map or a compass that was left at this point, you'd still want to do Mothula first, because you're going to do it anyway. So do it first. If it's the item, great. And if it's not, uh, then you can check underneath the bridge. And it's just 50 rupees, so uh, there's someplace else we need to go that we haven't hit up. That I am not immediately thinking of. Yeah, I think it's mirror checks are the next thing in the oh, line. Okay. Me yeah, that's right. We got all those mirror checks now. And, of course... Swamp Palace. <laughs> and uh, someone mentioned desert in chat. We actually can't get into desert yet because no book and uh, we need mitts to get to the area where we'd, where we'd uh, mirror from. Uh, so question in chat about uh, Ice Palace. We were just saying that if mitts is your go mode... Uh, if that's the last item you find, then you know Ice Palace can't have any progression behind it. So the idea yep. would be if that's the very last thing after Red came, then we're not going to have to check anything in Ice Palace. Oh, Christos beeline it straight for Swamp Palace. So eager to get in there, he forgets to go ahead and uh, mirror to the light world to flood flood it first. Yeah, minor details. <laughs> uh, to answer the question, no, they have not done any of those mirror checks yet. So uh, we have K, like you said, K forty five graveyard ledge, and um, King's tomb. Yep. So Christos is opting for the potentially six item checks in Swamp Palace, all told. Uh, as opposed to those three. Um, and again, thinking that maybe the mirror was there to get us into Ice Palace, or Swamp Palace, rather, uh, and hoping to find his progression here. We'll see if Yoshi makes the same decision or if uh, we get some more route divergence. We'll get the big key right away, which in Swamp Palace is really nice, because then you don't have to worry about when to route in that big chest. One of the worst situations is when either you clear out the left side first, and then get the big key on Argus, and you have to decide where to go back in. Or if you uh, uh, kill Argus without the big key, go back into the left side and see a big key that you have to backtrack to. So Nice to get that early, you don't have to worry about it. So, very fast moth fight from Yoshi. Um, also switching to the mirror, which makes me think he is going to follow Christos into Swamp Palace. Looting to Forest says that's what he's doing, although maybe he checks K45 first. It's not that far away from here. And Christos opting to skip the left side for now. I don't think we've seen either map or compass yet, so no guarantee that there are even items over there, so this makes sense. Yeah, I like the play to, if you haven't seen dungeon items, but specifically the map and compass, to do left side afterwards. Um, certainly if this is a crystal dungeon, I, I always like to see runners go to the back first and then make a decision whether to go to the left side or not. But this being a pendant dungeon, uh, going to the left side first makes a lot of sense if you see a uh, map and compass early. And there are those mitts. So uh, the dream of the mitts go mode, not going to happen. Yeah, I think that also means left side swamp is not going to happen. 
Uh, Christos is unlikely to head back there. It's going to have one item at most. Well, we or at see least one item, it, it will have at least one item. We'll see what Argus drops. Uh, if Argus drops the compass. Uh, I guess we saw a map, so there'd be a compass. Then there'd be two items. But I think you follow the mitts first and come back here later if you need to. Yeah, as we've been saying, Mitz opens up so much for you that left side swamp just seems very unappealing. Uh, we've got uh, Dark Death Mountain. We can get into the Meyer area and check Meyer Shed and Checkerboard Cave. We can get into Desert Palace now. It's a pendant, so it's no one's favorite, but it's there. <laughs> so we're going to be on a full-on cane search for a while. Uh, you can actually go into Meyer looking for that. You might you might see them do Ice Palace first. But honestly, I think if you'd found the cane in that spot, then you'd maybe keep going in Swamp. Because the cane only opens up... Uh, actually, at this point, it would open up nothing. <laughs> Which is why we wanted to find it first. <laughs> and Christo's heading over to the Meyer area. I, I like this choice to, at the very least, check Meyer Shed and check Board Cave. Uh, whether you go into Meyer or not, that's, that's a little harder to make a decision on. Yeah, if you're going pure item density, uh, I think this is the first choice, and then Dark Death Mountain is the next one. But there's always the choice of do you just head into Ice Palace and finish the last crystal that you can do and make those checks along the way. Only three yep. items, and it definitely slows you down a lot, but if you find the cane while progressing toward finishing the seed, that's fantastic for you. Ice Palace also being our other 5-6 crystal, which actually leads to an interesting point of if Ice Palace is Samaria locked, which is what would happen if we see a key on Cold Stair, uh, then you don't have to check that 5-6 crystal for the cane, so that's kind of nice. And it looks like Christos is going to go straight into Meyer. And at this point, that's as good a choice as any. Uh, we'll see what the key layout is here. If the uh, big key is, if we have the so-called Godmire, then if the cane's not here, this is going to lose him some time potentially if Yoshi decides to go elsewhere to find his cane. On the other hand, if the cane is here, he's good. Uh, or if uh, the big key is in a really nasty spot anyway, then he's not going to lose time overall because Yoshi will just have to do the same thing when he gets there. Yeah, it's weird to actually be hoping for a garbage big key location, but... Oh, if you, if you don't have Kane, yeah. If, if you're not in go mode going into Mire, you don't want a good key. You don't want that god Mire. <laughs> yeah, because then you were going to have to full clear the front of Mire anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure Chad is still holding on to the hope that we'll blind pull Ped for Kane. Yeah, really nice Argus fights from both of our runners there. Uh, Yoshi, I think, busted out the Ice Rod for the final phase, just for uh, extra swag. Most people use Fire Rod, because it's a bit easier. Yep, and we do get the Cotton Mire as we find the big key in the in the chest with the spikes. Uh, looks like Yoshi's going to go a different direction. going to check, at least check K45 here. And so far, just bombs. <laughs> and oh, Christo's finding a book, so this adds two more locations to the possibility of where that cane can be. And it looks like Yoshi may be following Christos into the Myra area. Let's see if he decides also to go into the dungeon itself. And for all that we've been talking about, you know, who's ahead, all the lead changes, this seed is pretty much wide open at this point in this red cane hunt. Yep. Our runners 
especially with that book, can access pretty much everything in the world now uh, outside of Vitreous and Turtle Rock. So Yeah, this is going to come down to who finds the cane first, but what I will say is if Yoshi continues to follow uh, in Christos' lead and continues to do the same checks behind him, uh, then Christos would definitely be in the lead. So at this point, really, if you're rooting for Yoshi, you want to see him do something different. And here it is, fluting away from the Meyer area after just checking the overworld checks outside. And headed up to Dark Death Mountain from the looks of things. And we got one more location left in Meyer for Christos. So there's no real right answer here about whether you want to prioritize overworld checks or dipping into crystal dungeons. Like, it could just no, go anyway. Really rando isn't. is gonna rando. And just to map, I do believe we only saw one item. Uh, Viddy can't have the cane, so it's definitely not in Mire. Definitely not the answer there. So we'll see if uh, Yoshi has the answer over here on, in Dark Death Mountain. Uh, looks like Christos is going to check out Desert, so we're going to continue to have this rot diversion, which is pretty interesting. I think this makes sense for Christos to sort of follow through on the Meyer play. He's sort of committed yep. to full clearing this area of the world, and he's going to stick with it. Yeah, I agree. what it's worth, we do have a boots-locked desert. And meanwhile, Yoshi has uh, six checks between Super Bunny and Hookshot Cave. Uh, and the cane would be a huge swing in the race if he can find it here. Blue mail's nice, not what they're looking for. Red mail! Still now, and we have a red dragon suddenly. Gosh, I didn't even get to enjoy the blue dragon. <laughs> but it's not Hookshot Cave. This is the one place that Christos is going to have an advantage for having gotten into Meyer first. He did find that book. So, you know, Meyer, we, we, I just said, you know, I just said Meyer wasn't the answer. Uh, if that cane is on one of those tablets, um, then I was would say that Meyer was the answer. Oh! Um, there it is. Wait, did we in in Super Bunny? Super wow. Super Bunny Cave is the answer. So, Yoshi has some choices now. He can either uh, he could do TR right now, and I don't think it's a significant difference whether he does it now or later. Um, or he could go and do the other dungeons first. It really doesn't matter at this point. Either way, he's gonna have to come up the mountain one more time, and he is just gonna go ahead and do TR now. It looks like. And yeah, this is why Christos was hoping for that uh, awful big key location, because he was hoping to at least bank that time that he could cash it in later when Yoshi was looking for the big key, uh, when they both have to go back to Meyer, but uh, Yoshi will find that big key really quickly and spend so much less time in Meyer compared to yep. Christos. And Christos looks like he's going to make the Ice Palace play, getting a couple extra potions for uh, the Argus fight, and, you know, uh, Ice Palace being a very magic-heavy dungeon. Uh, uh, we know this is the wrong choice, but for him, it's not a bad choice. It's a crystal dungeon you have to clear anyway. Yeah, and the thought process, I think, is pretty clear. I mean, he's basically said, well, if Red King is on Dark Death Mountain, I've already lost this race. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he's playing as if it isn't. And priorities in crystal dungeons is, is uh, often a strategy. And, you know, sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. I know I personally like to prioritize crystal dungeons. Um... And, it, you know, it just doesn't always work. But honestly, I would... Well, I guess it doesn't matter, because uh, Kane can be in a Kane locked Ice Palace. So, uh, the only thing... The, the one thing we he's got to hope for uh, is that it is a Samario-locked Ice Palace. Uh, if he does get that key on Cold Stair, 
then he knows he doesn't have to check the uh, Pyramid Fairy. Yeah, and you have to think, even if he's uh, put all of his chips in uh, betting against Dark Death Mountain, he's probably not going to do slower checks like the Smith's Chain uh, and things like that before heading up there. But we'll see how long it takes him to get to that Kane and Super Bunny cave as Yoshi is yeah. burning his way through uh, Turtle Rock at this point. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, it's one thing to prioritize Crystal Dungeons over overworld checks. Uh, but it's a whole other thing to, to uh, choose a slower overall trek over a faster one. And as so often happens, Yoshi already has the big key, so could skip the vanilla big key chest, just stealing that pokey key, and headed right toward the back of Turtle Rock right now. Yep. There is a small chance you can get burned for this. I think I, I've often heard it quoted about 5%. Uh, again, if the lava chest and the big chest both have keys, uh, which just so rarely happens. I, you know, there's no, no. So chances are that other key will be on laser bridge. Bridge starts with this with the shield upgrade and the small key. So if that's it, he's not checking anything else. No time for suspense on that laser bridge. Just finding that small key right away. Butter story, this Trinex fight is going to go real fast. Crystal number five for Yoshi with the next two in sight. Chris is going to go ahead and save some magic using the Bombos. Although with Gold Sword, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't quite get that spin uh, in the ideal way, but uh, gets to the fight pretty easily. Does find the key on Cold Stairs, so we'll know that uh, this was logically Kane of Samaria locked. So that'll save him a trip to the Pyramid Fairy. You'll see the difference between uh, Yoshi doesn't even bother checking the pen gator chest, doesn't even bother needing it. Uh, at this point, there are a few items, uh, there, are, there are a couple of luxury items that he could find that might make things a little bit easier, like powder for, for the anti fairies or silver arrows. Nothing he needs, uh, so he's just not going to check anything that's not directly in his path.
Oh, Christos. No. <laughs> okay, not reading that that key on uh on cold stair and it's going to go ahead and check that pyramid fairy. Yeah, or maybe just losing track of exactly which ones were the red pendants. Uh, that's the point I get to in the seed where it's like, oh, I, I have two red crystals. Yep. I guess I should do this yep. and I forget where they came from. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Uh, either one of those is possible. And doesn't get rewarded with anything there. I was hoping maybe he'd find silvers or something to at least be a consolation prize, but nope, just some rupees and bombs. Oh, is he headed to the smith chain? Oh, he's going to check pad. That's right, because he has the book. Oh, yep. He is going to take that look at it. Just couch cash. At least he knows now he doesn't have to go finish desert. Okay, go up to the mountain. There you go. Uh, so the choice being the Smith chain, I think at this point this has got to be the better, the better answer. Even if I didn't know the location, but it looks like he's gonna. Yeah, I, I do like that he's gonna check the uh, ether tablet first, uh, hoping that that book does lead to something. Uh, we know it's not going to, but for his situation, that makes a lot of sense. Yep, and an even faster cold stare fight from Yoshi there. Dud uh, did get those puffs stuck in the corner and just a few butter sword slashes. So only Misery Meyer left for Yoshi, which, as we saw with the uh, key placement, will go pretty quickly. Yeah, the go, the go mode Meyer with that key placement is just super quick, saves a ton of time. Oh, just is checking the ether tablet, so maybe he's going to go to that smith chain. He really just doesn't want to do the Dark Death Mountain checks. Yeah, again, he knows what his opponent probably has been doing in this amount of time. Yep. And if the cane is there, which it is, then uh, he's, he's not going to have much of a chance to catch up. So his best chance of winning with the information he has is to completely ignore Dark Death Mountain. This is the, uh, okay, endgame spoilers incoming, right? But this is like when <laughs> Doctor Strange says there's only one path, right? Like, yep. as crazy as it is, you have to try it. And just a piece of heart, Pamra Pegs. At least he could do this relatively quickly um, with the, with all the movement items, loot, mirror, boots. And as you can see, Yoshi's already on his way uh, to the back of Meyer. It looks like he's going to walk that purple chest a little bit because he'll probably uh, route in K45. And then we'll either see him flute with the chest or we'll see him do the new, the, the really cool new glitch that lets you run and leave the purple chest and then mirror right next to the, the uh, thief there. And 
we'll see uh, NMG strats, but better on Cold Stare with this Butter Sword. Gets through those eyeballs very quickly, and then shoot eight arrows into the big eyeball. And gets half magic. That's always a, that's a nice luxury item to pick up. Now, unless we find those silvers, we are going to have to do silverless. Although uh, it's not master sword silverless, so the, the uh, having the extra magic is going to be nice, but not not quite as uh, as crucial as it could be. And Bobo's tablet. Okay, I think we've now run through all the locations, except for the Dark Death Mountain area. Kind of funny we haven't found those silver arrows, which in a way is good for the runners, because uh, we don't need to worry, you know, they they don't have to worry about whether Agla was actually required. Um, all signs are pointing to that there was no way, there was absolutely no way where they are going to get another bow. I think we've checked all the areas that could have been before that anyway. Yeah, most likely uh, those silvers are going to be locked in Ganon's tower at this point. Because I think we've seen just about everything else in the game by now. I think we have. Um, I don't know how many items Christos already got out of Desert. I'm guessing there's one more item on Landmolo since he's going back there. Ah, uh, yes, chat reminding us that we should be playing the Ganon's Tower oh, yeah. game right now. Since Yoshi is on his way there with all seven crystals. You want to get so, us started? 20... Yeah, 22 locations in Ganon's Tower where that big key might be. Get those guesses in chat. Okay, has someone actually started it in the chat yet? I'm trying to see. Oh, okay, uh... Link Force, our tracker has got it for us. Oh, uh, shout out to Lake Forest for doing the tracking for us and, and uh, starting the big key guessing game. Absolutely. Without the trackers, we would be so lost. Oh, we really would be. <laughs> I'm lost enough with them, so... <laughs> I, I love the way Christos finished that fight with the three uh, dash dashes into the three uh, snakes there. <laughs> but just arrows there for, for the prize, so unfortunate. Okay, number one, big 20. Number two, bomb. So Yoshi's going to have no choice but to mirror on out. No small key to proceed to the right side. Oh. Could have done tile room, but no one does that. So <laughs> uh, Number three on the torch is a small key. Oh, I don't think we've seen uh, Graveyard Ledge. That looks like where Christos is heading now. Number four is ten arrows. Number five is a bug net. And number six. So a couple of very convenient uh, big key placements for Yoshi, both in Meyer and here in Ganon's Tower. Uh, has been showing off some great execution. Uh since hitting go mode with that red cane and he is going to start his way up the gauntlet right now. Okay, I believe we've now checked everywhere. Uh, so Christos is just going to have no choice but to go ahead up to Dark Death Mountain. Of course, the fast GT big key probably means we're not going to see silvers at any point, but not really a concern. For yeah, I mean, they, they, could be, they could be in the last four chests, which Yoshi may or may not check. Um, but yeah, more likely it's in those bottom chests that we never saw since we got, since there's still 16 of them left that we never saw. Actually, 17 if you count the big chest, but no one ever looks at the big chest. Now, oh, Christo's doing Spike Cave first. Oof. Oh, my God. 
You see the half magic here also coming in handy. Yoshi can uh, burn a few more fire rod shots. Yeah, it's actually really important because when you get to that next, the torches room coming up, uh, there's one small uh, magic refill, and that by itself is not going to be enough. Uh, so he has plenty now, though. Half magic helping out with that and allowing him, like you said, uh, lets him use that fire rod a little bit more. Oh, Crystal's. I I keep forgetting locations. He's gonna go back into Left Side Swamp. Just just doesn't want to go into Dark Death Mountain. And none of these are bad choices necessarily, um, but unfortunately, the one place he's decided he just doesn't want to go to is the place he needs to be. Oh, and Yoshi barely having enough to use that fire rod for all those shots, but did have enough. Fortunately, there'll be a ma another magic refill coming up for him, and he's not going to check these chests. He says, you know what? Uh, silverless, this is fine, especially with the gold sword, no problem. No, Yoshi not checking any of these chests at the top of the tower. Heading into Aghanim 2. This is also a good time to point out, since we have not done it yet, to uh, give both of these runners a follow. Uh, as you've seen, both top-notch runs of the game. Uh, Christos, in particular, has done a lot of uh, dev work on the randomizer as well, so they are both great follows with a lot of uh, rando skill and knowledge. So be sure to check out their channels. Not sure if Yoshi quite got the double there. If those balls hit there at the same time, uh, they don't both count. Okay, but in general, still making fairly quick work of the Ag Agatu. Nothing left between Yoshi and the Game 1 win, but the Ganon fight. Yoshi doing a very nice job staying within that circle of those fire bats. <clears throat> Is going to want to get that potion, that uh, torch glitch coming up in just a second. Um, not the end of the world if he doesn't. I believe he has some extra potions if he needs them. And of course that half magic. But it does make the last part of the fight a lot easier if you only have to light one torch at a time instead of two. And no, we did not find the, the silver arrows in Ganon's tower. And Crystals looks like he's trying to figure out where to go next. Yeah, there's some speculation in chat about if he uh, has actually forgotten about Dark Death Mountain, or uh, if he's just sort of... Uh, resigned to his fate and is just waiting for Yoshi to finish out this Ganon fight. Uh, six spins in, I believe, if I'm counting correctly. Okay, there he goes. Flutes up to the mountain. Meanwhile, Yoshi finishing up Ganon.
So put your GG's in chat for Yoshi taking game one. Finishing up with an official SRL time of 1.44.02. And that's a pretty impressive time for uh, the wild path that this seed sent our runners on. Okay, Crystal's about to find his cane. But Christos not done yet. We, it is a three-game series for a reason. Um, he'll he'll get a chance to change one of the settings for game two. Yep, and I believe our runners have already scheduled uh, game two for this same time tomorrow. Uh, and then game three, if necessary, for this time on Saturday, if I remember yep, the schedule that, correctly. That sounds correct. And actually, while we're at it, we can go ahead and... Uh, there's a couple more batches today uh, in general, so let's go ahead and talk about those. We have, as soon as I get it up here, um, at 7.50... We have game two of Goomba versus McLagging. At 11.50, we have game two of Gamachu versus Act the Boker. Um, and also tomorrow we have, uh, you know, like we already said, Christos and Yoshi will be playing their game two at 2.20. Uh, at 6.50 tomorrow, we'll have Will or Jay Bradley versus P-Train. And at 11.50, we'll have, if uh, Gamachu versus Ak goes to a game three, that'll be played at 11.50 p.m. tomorrow on Friday. Tomorrow and Friday being the same thing, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, anyway, the point is a whole lot of Link to the Past randomizer coming your way. A lot of good matches on the schedule um, that you all should enjoy. Yeah, I mean, just listening to that schedule, you can hear what a stacked lineup uh, is left yeah. in this tournament. So it should be really great to watch everything we have left in the uh, Fall 2019 tourney. It does look like Christos is going to go ahead and finish this out. A lot of respect for players that do this. Uh, a lot of people will just decide to quit at this point. Um, but he says, nope, I'm going to finish this out. And it just came down to last locationing that one item. And unfortunately, that's just the way these game, these uh, races can go sometimes, because it was quite the race uh, up until that point. And, and Christos even had a bit of a lead uh, up until the point they diverged. Yeah, and uh, you got to think that uh, Christos has hit the point where he's uh, a little bit tilted at the seed, but so mad at it that uh, you absolutely have to finish it. you got to show the seed who's boss in the end. Shoutouts also to uh, our tracker once again. Uh, Link Force, thank you very much for keeping us on track throughout the match. Um, so be sure to uh, give Link Force a follow, and also follow my co-commentator Tracy M. Uh, and uh, my co-commentator, cool, cool Papa Bell, with the the cool baseball uh, reference name. So anyone that uses a a, a, ba a, a cool baseball player uh, for their Twitch name is is got to be pretty cool. <laughs> Well, my baseball <laughs> references are much better than my Link to the Past play, so... Uh... <laughs> so, crystal number six coming down for Christos Owen. Yeah. 
Okay, now Chris was just a turtle rock away from being able to complete uh, GT and uh, finish the seed. And Crystal's taking a moment there. It's been quite a bit of chatter in the SRL channel, so it may be that he was pausing at that at point to type something. I guess we can also take a second here to talk about the uh, rest of the speed gaming schedule for tonight. Uh, of course, we mentioned that uh, 750 race with, uh, what was it, Goomba and McLagging at 750? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, looks like we got some Super Mario World at 7 and 8. Uh, the Link to the Past Randomizer daily race at 9 as well, if you're interested in that. Uh, all sorts of things going on on the speed gaming networks, and we, of course, appreciate your continued support follows etc so thank you very much for coming out and watching yeah and uh i gotta shout out uh one thing for uh tomorrow night since it's near and dear to my heart uh the super metroid randomizer league finals uh between azure and kip are going on tomorrow at 7 p.m eastern so uh, uh go ahead and there's a tournament a links fast tournament match at the same time so go ahead and do a little multi-twitch but uh um definitely want to tune into that Seems dangerous to uh, run Link to the Past and Super Metroid at the same time. Seems like the games might uh, suddenly merge together in some some sort yeah, of yeah, yeah, that yeah, that uh, that is a little dangerous. <laughs> yeah. I'm still amazed every time I think about it that the games just randomly mesh together on the ROM to be able to run both of them at once. It's completely ridiculous. <laughs> it really is. And it just came out of a joke. I mean, if you watch some of the old uh, tourney matches for both uh, Super Metroid and for Link to the Past from 2017, uh, you see jokes about finding, you know, Hookshot in, in Super Metroid or finding, you know, uh, like an Ice Beam in... Uh, in Link to the Past and to, to, to actually put them together like they did. Uh, Shoutouts to Total for uh, giving us a whole nother way of playing these games. I should give a personal shout out too because that's pretty much the only way I got into Link to the Past was I saw the combo randomizer and I was like, oh, I gotta play that. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm addicted. <laughs> nice. So, fortunately for Christos, this isn't. This is a pretty decent key layout for uh, Turtle Rock, so it shouldn't take him too long to get through. Looks like some more uh, chatting in IRC got him uh, distracted in that roller room. <laughs> I love that little block block kick there in the uh, in the uh, chain chomps room. Yeah, that's one of my least favorite rooms in the game, right there. So. Oh, it's a terrible room. <laughs> and 
and there's that fast beep again. Well, I guess he is going to go ahead and check a few extra chests here. Cape's a nice safety. Unfortunately, now he is going to have to get uh, another small key out of the big chest. It's the very friendly uh, Pokey RNG right there. even going to check Mimicade. Maybe he just wants to 100% this thing at this point. But we got a uh, raid from Speed Gaming 2. Uh, this match is just wrapping up at this point. Yoshi has taken the win already, and Christos Owen is on his way up to uh, finish his last crystal and finish out the seed. Yeah, for those of you just coming in, it came down to the Kane of Samario location. Uh, Yoshi went relatively quick uh, at that point to check Dark Death Mountain, having just found Mitz. Um, finding his Kane of Samario in the Super Bunny Cave. Uh, Christos managed to last location that and check pretty much everywhere up but uh, the Dark Death Mountain area. And as Randomizer sometimes does, it comes down to that one item. Uh, what was a really good race up to that point. Um, unfortunately coming down to that one uh, divergence. Yeah, and really the seed didn't give our runners too many options to uh, diverge too no, much. No, it really didn't. It was a very linear seed. Uh, Christos have, had a bit of a lead up to that point. Yeah, and then those myths just sort of uh, made so much of the world available simultaneously that the cane could have been just about anywhere. Yeah, that's why, you know, I, I talked about that Mitz Go mode. Um, that's why they wanted to find Kane first. Uh, that Mitz, Mitz Go mode, uh, there's just so many locations you can just skip if that's your Go mode item. Okay, we do see the rest of Laser Bridge here. Uh, nothing interesting, though. Now, we know that Silver Hours are going to be somewhere in Ganon's Tower, so there's not a whole lot else. I guess Powder and a Bug Net is about all we... It's the only things I don't see on the tracker. I, I don't know if they skipped Bug Net somewhere and I missed it. Uh, yeah, I feel like we saw Bug Net. It was like on the library or... Yeah, something. it wouldn't uh, maybe, surprise me. Maybe Bumper Ledge. That's one of those items that, you, you, you know, it, it has such limited use. Yeah, but our runners were on green mail for uh, most of this season. Yeah, they really were. Upgrades were in Crookshot Cave. Yeah, it was kind of kind of fun to see the uh, dragon sprite that Yoshi was using. It went from a green to a blue, and then right afterwards going to a red. Okay, so uh, the bug net's going to be in. Uh, same room as the, of the Ganon Tower big key. So, yeah, you see it on, you see it lit up on Yoshi's side. Okay, and Crystal's gonna head to GT, finish this off.
Also gonna check the right side first, but it's gonna get blocked because there's no small key here. I guess we could play the GT uh, guessing game again and try and guess <laughs> what order he's gonna open up those chests in DM's room. No, it looks like he's gonna do it the same order though. Gonna get his big key over here. There's that bug net. And gonna go ahead and head on up. <laughs> in my head cannon now the silvers are in that fourth chest in DM's room that neither of them opened. <laughs> Well, we never did see the top four chests, so maybe he goes ahead and checks those. dash through those spikes. That's another room I have to practice. I, uh, I just bump into those mimics so many times in that stupid room. As Christos heads into the gauntlet. The one nice thing about not having silver is you don't have to worry about your arrow count, because if you run out, it doesn't matter. Koopa just getting his steps in there, running a couple extra laps around that room. One last room, finishing finishes it up. So close one, to that. Yeah. One misfire rod shot um, away from having just an absolute gorgeous uh, land mole tool. Still very nice. I want to have a long chat with whoever decided to put that uh, fireball shooter in there. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> See if he decides to check these at all. 50 rupees. Small key. One last shot. Gets that nice dash through Moldorm 2 to finish him off. Alright, our silver arrows are somewhere in the basement. I 
think that double counted, but I'm not I think that was sure. a double. That was definitely a double. And getting just a three round, anytime you can three round Aga 2 is really nice. I mean, the two rounds are so rare. Three round being still very, very good. A 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Yeah, so often the seed won't even give you a setup for uh, two triples, so... Yeah, exactly. And so Christos is a little low on health going into this Ganon fight, but uh, again, with Butter Sword, probably won't be too much of a problem. You need some fun da uh, dash strats there. And we still didn't find the Silver Arrows in Ganon's Tower. And Christos, no problem getting the Torch Glitch. And she'll make this easier for him. And showing off some more of those, uh triple hits that you can get with a single lighting of the torch. If you time it just right, um, then you always should be able to get a triple. Yeah, and it requires the fire rod so that you can uh, hold your spin while you're shooting that fire rod yeah. shot. Exactly. And a very nice Ganon fight as uh, Christos Owens finish finishes it up. And so everybody get your GG's in chat as Christos crosses that bridge with an official SRL time of 2.08.15. Uh, GG's to Christos Owen finishing up that, <laughs> that crazy seed. Yep, and uh, now we'll have the option, of course, of toggling something for Game 2, which, again, as a reminder, will be happening about uh, 22 hours from now, tomorrow at the same time that this race started. Yeah, he'll have the option of he could do an Assured Sword. Uh, he can do a Standard Mode, where you have to do the Escape. Um, he can go 6-6 six, six Crystals, or he could do a Fast Ganon setup. So he's got a, got a few choices there. Or, 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 I always forgot, the Map Compass Shuffle. Yeah, the sort of uh, halfway key sanity. But uh, that definitely yeah. shifts the logic around a little bit because it makes dungeons much more uh, much more appealing since they all have two more items than they do in the regular randomizer. And makes maps a lot less annoying to find because they actually tell you something. Unless it's Ganon's Tower or uh, Hyrule Castle. But yeah, I don't know if Christos is wanting to come in for an interview. Um, but if not, we'll just uh, let the credit credits run. Um, thank a bunch of people. So thank you, Cool Papa Bell, for uh, joining me on commentary. Uh, Link Forest for doing the tracking. Uh, mind me for setting us up behind the scenes for Speed Gaming. Speed Gaming for hosting us. A reminder to follow these runners. And of course, thank you to our runners for putting on a good show. And to follow my co-commentator and our tracker, Link Forest. Um, and a reminder, I'll, I'll go through the schedule of what's going on uh, tonight again. 
have to open up that web page again. We uh, have, again, we have Goomba versus McLagging game two on Speed Gaming 2 at 7.50 and Gamma Chu versus Act the Boker on the main Speed Gaming channel at 11.50. Uh, the first one will be commentated by Ace Zero and Drossy. Um, at 11.50 we'll have James FNX and Nihon Tiger. So this should be should be some good stuff coming up. Yeah, and of course the uh, tournament is going to continue. Uh, so many of these matches are getting restreamed on Speed Gaming and uh, the various Speed Gaming networks. So definitely keep your eyes on this channel and on the tournament Discord, which I believe we have a link for somewhere. Um, if you want to keep track of more great randomizer action. Yeah, and uh, to be sure you don't miss anything, follow the Speed Gaming channels, uh, Speed Gaming, Speed Gaming 2 through 6, and uh, every once in a while we do put uh, matches on the ALTTP Randomizer channel, uh, so follow that as well, as well as ALTTP Randomizer 2 through 5. And of course, don't forget to follow my co-commentator, Tracy M. Uh, it's been a lot of fun talking through this race with you today, uh, yeah, as it really always. Has. Yep, my, it was absolutely my pleasure. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that'll be it for me then. Um, hope to see you at the next race, and uh, yeah, have fun watching that. And we'll just let these credits roll, roll until uh, next time. Absolutely. Have a great night, everybody.